Welcome to today's video on the design of pile caps. In this video, we will be discussing the crucial aspects of pile caps, including the transfer of actions, layout of piles, axial forces, and determining the required reinforcement. We'll also be covering important checks, such as node checks and shear checks, to ensure the strength and stability of pile caps. So, let's dive into the world of pile caps and understand the design principles behind this transfer structure. It's important to note that pile caps serve as transfer structures, transferring actions from the superstructure to the piles. They function as a form of pyramid truss, distributing axial and bending forces from a vertical element into the piles. The design process involves determining the reinforcement needed based on factors such as cap depth, axial load, concrete strength, and pile size and spacing. Moving on, we'll be focusing on the design of pile caps for small groups of piles, typically two to four piles. On the other hand, larger pile caps influenced by differential settlement across the base will be addressed in a future video. Next. The angle of the axial force from the superstructure is determined by the depth of the pile cap, typically 45 degrees, but no shallower than 21.8 degrees. Additionally, the layout of piles is largely influenced by the magnitude and location of actions they are to support, and piles are grouped together based on their capacity to support axial forces. Moreover, the location of piles should be symmetrical, with a minimum proximity of three times the diameter of the pile. For pile caps with one or two piles, some restraint is required orthogonally to the piles and is usually achieved through ground beams. The edge of a pile cap should be no less than 150 mm from the edge of a pile, and the head of the pile penetrates the soffit of the cap by at least 75 mm. Now, Let's move on to determining the axial forces in piles within pile caps. The axial force in each pile is calculated as where n is the number of piles. This method is only applicable for pile groups with a maximum of five piles. However, for larger pile groups, differential displacement leads to an increase in axial force at the pile cap extremities. Subsequently, the factor STAR is considered when designing the pile cap foundation, described as shown, as the pile cap does not have any direct interaction with the soil. In designing pile caps, the strut and tie method is employed, with reinforcement acting like a truss, with concrete handling compression and steel handling tension. The required tension reinforcement is T divided by 0.87 times the tension strength of steel, usually 500 Newton per square millimeters. T is the tensile force between piles and can be calculated using the shown table. Moving forward, we will delve into the significance of node checks and shear checks in pile caps. These checks are critical to guarantee the strength and stability of pile caps. As you may be aware, no checks are necessary to verify the strength of struts in pile caps. Pile caps contain two types of nodes, CTT, tension, and CCC compression nodes. The compressive strength of these nodes must be checked based on the forces applied to the pile cap. The strength of nodes in pile caps is calculated by considering the concrete strength and a factor with different formulas for CCC and CTT nodes. It's crucial to compare the pile force with the calculated node force, particularly for shallow pile caps. Furthermore, it's imperative to check for shear failure in a critical shear plane near the vertical element supported by the pile cap. The critical shear plane's location is determined by the distance between the face of the vertical element and the pile face. The shear resistance is calculated based on the enhanced shear capacity of the pile cap near the point of support, which is the pile head. The applied shear force can be reduced by the ratio of the pile cap depth to the critical shear plane distance. It is also important to check the shear at the face of the vertical element fixed to the pile cap. The critical shear plane needs to be checked to determine if it fails in shear. 
The shear resistance is defined by a formula that includes parameters such as the concrete compressive strength and tensile reinforcement area. If the applied shear force is greater than the calculated shear resistance, additional reinforcement may be required. Finally, let's discuss detailing rules specific to pile caps. Reinforcement must be placed close to the surface of the concrete pore for proper bonding, and the lengths of reinforcement bars are dependent on concrete strength and bonding, which are listed in Table 2 of BSEN 1992-11. For a more precise calculation of anchorage length, Clause 843 of EN 1992-11 can be used. Also, it's worth mentioning that the smallest size of reinforcement in a pile cap must be 8 mm and the minimum tension reinforcement needed can be calculated using the formula, where big T is the average width of tension area over the piles, is the effective depth of pile cap, and FC Tem is the concrete's strength under tension. That's it for today's video on pile caps. We hope you have a better understanding of the crucial aspects of pile cap design, including transfer of actions, pile layout, axial forces, and reinforcement. Node and shear checks were also discussed to ensure strength and stability. Designing pile caps involves balancing multiple factors for a stable building or bridge foundation. Thank you for watching. We will dive into pile design with a worked example in the next video, so stay tuned.